Welcome to this week's message from Alive Church. My name is Michael Brusicki and I'm the senior pastor of Alive Church. We have locations in Southeast Virginia, St. Louis, Missouri, our online church, as well as an international location in Manila, Philippines, a prison location in partnership with God Behind Bars, and we're believing God that only more and more people would come to know Him through our efforts. I'm so glad that you chose to take some time today to be encouraged through this message. You know, we think it's so important that we don't go through life simply living in mediocrity, but that we actually believe what Jesus said. He said the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but that Jesus himself came that we would have life and have it to the full. Our hope for you today, that as you watch this message, you would be convicted potentially by the Holy Spirit, but you'd be encouraged as well by the Holy Spirit, that you would know you can live fully alive right now, right where you are, and fulfill God's purpose for your life. Enjoy this week's message. Well, my name's Stephen. I'm the lead pastor of our St. Louis location, and I'm so glad to be with you today. We're in a signs and statements series that we've been through this throughout the month or throughout the summer, talking through the signs of Jesus and the statements of Jesus in the book of John. John is the fourth book of the gospel and it tells the life of Jesus. And uh, he, he talks about seven different statements of Jesus that Jesus that are I am statements, de declarations about who he is. And then the signs are the things that pointed people to Jesus, the miracles of Jesus, because when we talk about signs, the sign is not the thing, the sign points to the thing, right? If you just stop at the sign, you're missing on what you could get to, and that's what Jesus was about. He performed miracles to point people to him, and as I said, his statements, the I am statements brought clarity of who he is, the character of God here on earth, and so today we're going to be talking about one you may have heard of before, if you're familiar with Bible at all, it's where Jesus says, I am the light of the world, and so would you uh, read this along with me? It's in it's in uh, John 8, we stand to honor God's word. And when I say read along with me, it doesn't mean you need to read out loud, just follow along so we're clear. It says, it's, it says Jesus, well, if I can get there in my notes, we'll get there. I'll just have to read it right here. And Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. God, I thank you for your word. I thank you that this is true for us, that you are the light that leads to life. And that's true for everyone in the room. God, whether we've been following you for a long time or this is the first time we've been in church, God, we just thank you that your, your word is true, that you're the light that leads to life. We thank you for what you're going to speak to us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to have a seat. He says, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. Not that he'll turn on the light, not that he'll point you to the light, but he's like, this is, this is the character. This is the essence of who I am. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna break something really, like break it down for you really important. It's like rocket science. Light is important. That's what I got. Light is important. Did you know light is important? Like, you, I'm not saying you have to understand like the complexities of what it all means when the energy comes and light shines. Yes, that's really great to know, but light is important. As a parent of five kids, I know that light is important because there's been times when I've tried to navigate my house in the dark and I have realized light is important. I've walked through and I've, I've, I actually still have scars on the bottom of my feet from Legos. It's like the most painful thing in the world when you step on Legos and you're like, ah, it's worse than landmines. Through my house, when you got little kids, you know they're just strung everywhere. Light is important light allows us to see and we see this with Jesus explanation he says I'm the light of the world I want, I want to share a story with you I've got five kids my oldest is 18 and my youngest is six and years ago when my oldest son he's 16 now was little he struggled with being in the dark he was afraid of the dark he must have gotten it from his mother I'm just kidding it's actually me like I was terrified of the dark when I was a kid I hated it and fortunately I'm not that way anymore otherwise it'd be an awkward conversation a grown man afraid of the dark but he was about two years old, and he was in his room, and, and we, we were trying to get him where he didn't have any light on. He, was in, he was, had his light off in his room, and so we were like, buddy, we think you can do this. We believe in you. We're going to turn the light off tonight. You got this. And we're like, remember, like, you're not alone. Jesus is here with you, and like, you, you don't have to be afraid. And he's like, okay, I got it. And so we, would, we walked out of the room, sit down on the couch, and within a few seconds, we hear, Mom, Dad. There's monsters, there's monsters in my room. So we're like, as parents do, you get up and you go in and, 
and you're like, buddy, come on. Like, there's no monsters. Jesus is here. He's, he's with you. Like, you don't have to be afraid. You know, the Bible says that, that God hasn't given you a spirit of fear because, you know, we were super spiritual about it. We're like, God hasn't given you a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Remember that. Remember that. And I, 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 it's important to speak the truth of God's word over your kids. Don't get me wrong. But we're like, we got this. She's like, okay. So he walk, we walk out of the room. He lays back down a few seconds later. There's monsters. There's monsters. I'm so scared. Oh, okay, fine. Let's pray. We're just going to pray. We're going to pray together. So we pray with him. They pray. And we're like, okay, buddy, you good. Just so come out of the room again. There's monsters. This happens like multiple times. And you know, as a parent, it, well, however long it took, it feels like eternity. You're like, I just want to sit down. Please, it's fine. You don't have to be afraid of anything. And so finally, after lots of time goes by and he continues to say there's monsters in the room, here's what I did. I, I found a little sword in his room that lit up. It was a little plat, not a real sword. I'm not just... A little plastic sword that lit up. I handed it to him. I said, here you go, buddy. When those monsters show up, at least you got something to fight them with. <laughs> Life's important. It brought comfort to him in the moment. Terrible parenting. Terrible. But he wasn't afraid. Life's important. See, light was the first thing that God spoke into existence. Go back to Genesis 1. God created the heavens and the earth. And it says this. It said he spoke. Right? He said, let there be light. And there was light. In Hebrew, it's actually just two words, light be. See, God spoke this out, and in an instant, light came, flooded the universe, sustained life. Like, this is how powerful God is. He could have said anything, and he said, I'm going to make light first because light is so important. See, what I think is so powerful about light that impacts our life each and every single day it's like it's the one thing that happens constantly, one of the things that is constantly happening. The sun rises and the sun sets. But when it comes up in the morning, it's a thing that draws inspiration for us. Like I, every time I see a sunrise, I'm like, oh, my gosh. God, this is so magnificent. And maybe you haven't seen a sunrise in a long time because you like to sleep in. But listen, there's sunsets, and you can get a lot of inspiration from those, too. When sun comes up and sun goes down, it, it inspires us. We see the power just in, like, this small little picture of God. Light is important. It's the first thing God spoke into existence, and it's the first thing that John writes in the Gospels as he references Jesus in the first chapter. He explains it this way. John 1, 4, and 5. This is the word, which is how he references Jesus, gave life to everything that was created, and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the dark, darkness can never extinguish it. See, his light brought life to everyone. I hope that encourages you this morning. Like, just in the fact that Jesus came so that we did not have to walk in darkness. His light was for everyone. Like, when it says everyone, it means everyone. And, you know, I, I read that scripture sometimes, and, and it, I can just remind myself, okay, God, I, I need to know that your light is there, and, and the darkness won't over ever overcome it. The way that I want that scripture to read, like in, in the best moments, is like it will push back darkness, and I know at times it does because God's bringing his kingdom and it's pushing it back, but sometimes I just need to know in my lowest moments and the most difficult times that even when it seems so dark, there's nothing too dark that the light can't shine through. And maybe you're in the room today and you're like, it's just really tough right now. Like you don't know my story, you don't know what I'm walking through. Let me encourage you that no matter how difficult it is, the light will always shine in the darkness, and the darkness can never overcome it. It's the truth that we can hold on to. I'm so thankful that Jesus is the light of the world. So we're going to look at three different things that light is today. And again, it's nothing that's going to be rocket science for you. We're going to keep it pretty simple, but I pray that you lean in a little bit and see how it applies to your life. So as we look at light, what does light do? First thing light does is light leads. Light leads. Light leads. If I'm in a dark place and just a little bit of light comes in, I can walk towards that light. It leads me where I can actually see what's going on. See, that's what God says is, is we see that in, in, in Psalm 119, 105, says your word is a lamp to my feet and a light on my path. It leads us. So what that means, if it's leading, it means that we should follow. Right? This light of Jesus is not just this thing out here that we're supposed to know about, but it's who we're supposed to actually follow. One of the statements that Jesus makes when he calls people to be his disciples, it's two simple words. He says, follow me. And what that means when you follow is it means you give up control and you begin to follow the person that you're, that's leading you. Light leads. 
It doesn't mean that we can get comfortable. How many in the room actually like to be really comfortable? That's way less people than I expect. You're like, yes, Lord, I just challenge me every day. Put difficult people in my life, make it really hard for me. No, if we're honest, like we like to get comfortable. I like to be comfortable. But that's not what he says. Light leads us. We've got to follow. The disciples, as you read their stories, they were put in very difficult situations. And sometimes they hit the mark and sometimes they missed it, but they followed him. And I guarantee every single one of them would say, I would, it's worth it. See, as Christians, we, we don't want to be in this place of, of living our life comfortable. You know, I, I, it's not about how efficiently I can navigate my life. It's about how effective I can live my life for Jesus. See, he's not meant to be a nightlight in my room of comfort. In my own house, I can navigate a room in the dark really easily as long as the furniture has not been rearranged. Because I'm like, this is how it's supposed to be. So the lights are off. I know where I'm going. I'm going to take this path. I can get there really effectively. But you know, in life, sometimes we can do that exact same thing. We can think that we can navigate our life very efficiently and effectively. I get up, I go to work, I do this, I eat lunch, I come home, I go to bed, I do this over and over and over again. And none of us are called to do that. That's living in mediocrity. But it's living instead fully alive means that we're going to go, God, what are you going to do today? How are you going to lead me today? Are you going to lead me to have that conversation that I've been putting off for a long time? Are you going to lead me to interact with someone? Are you going to lead me in a different direction than I would have expected to go? He doesn't want us to just be comfortable. Because what the last two years have shown us is that comfort goes out the window because we can't expect consistency at all. When COVID hit for us, we're like, this is my life, this is what it's gonna be, and then boom, everything changes. It's a wake-up call that God calls us to follow him because light is intended to lead. How is God leading you today? Are you allowing his light to lead you? And are you actually making the choice to follow? It's the first thing light does, light leads. The next thing it does is light reveals. Oh, this can be a tough one. Light reveals. There's a story that, that, that leads up to this passage where Jesus says, I'm the light of the world. It's probably one, if you've been in church any amount of time, you're familiar with it. But it's where, it's where Jesus is in the, teach, in, the, in the temple teaching early, early in the morning. And while he's there, this group of Pharisees bring a woman into his presence. See, if, you're, if you don't know about the Pharisees, Pharisees were leaders in the Jewish culture and they were all about stopping Jesus. They didn't like what he was doing. He was disrupting his, their system of comfort. And so they wanted to find a way to trap him. And you would see consistently through the gospels different ways that they would try and do this. And, and they hit a new low when you see the story of this woman that they brought before Jesus. So Jesus is, is there teaching in the temple and, and these Pharisees bring this woman and she was caught in the act of adultery. Which the fact that you know it was a trap because only one person was brought. And if you're caught in the act of adultery, it means two folks are involved and only one was there. So they bring her in front of Jesus, using her as a pawn, not caring at all about the situation that she was in. We're like, we're going to use this person to trap Jesus. And so as he's teaching, they come and disrupt. And they said, what are we supposed to do with this woman? The law of Moses tells us we're supposed to, to stone her. But what do you say we're supposed to do? And this is what I love about Jesus. This is where, if you haven't read the word, it's, it's not just words on paper. But like when you get yourself in the story and you see like more about Jesus, you begin to love him even more. This is why I believe he is the light of the world. Because he doesn't respond or react to people. But instead he follows what he's supposed to do. And he disrupts. He disrupts the status quo. And so as they bring her to him, like what are we supposed to do with her? His response is to get down on the ground and begin to draw in the dirt. Like totally unexpected. They're like, we want an answer right now. He's like, no. And he gets down in the dirt and he begins to draw. And they get so frustrated and angry that they begin to demand an answer. And, and I like to think about the way that Jesus responds in such a way that, that he doesn't give an answer at first. Because I'm almost like, is he giving him a chance to get out? Like, is he not reacting? Is he not responding? Because he wants them to like, okay, just remember, remember who you're talking to. Don't poke the bear, because if you do, it's going to get a little bit messy. But they keep on and like, respond, react. We want, we want to know what we're supposed to do. And so what he does is he stands up and, and he says, any of you who've never sinned, go ahead and cast the first stone, right? This is a story. If you've been in church, you've heard it before. 
And then one by one, the oldest to the youngest, they left. And I think it's the oldest to the youngest because the older I get, the more sins I know that I've had. And so I'm like, yeah, I gotta get out of here first. The young one's thinking, oh, I've got it right. No, the older I get, the more I know I get it wrong. So they're like, I'm out of here. And as they walk away, it leaves Jesus and this woman in this place in front of everybody. And he says, woman, where are your accusers at? And she says, I don't have any. They're all gone. He says, I don't condemn you either. He says, go and sin no more. I love this story. It paints a beautiful picture of the Savior that we get to talk about, the light of the world that I'm talking about today. Because he got down on her level, and he saw her as a person versus as, as, as someone to be used and abused. See, when I say light reveals, in this story, in this moment, what we see is, is it reveals two things in two completely different directions. Because it takes the people, the Pharisees, and it reveals their motives behind, and it reveals the darkness in their life, and it reveals all the things that they were trying to prove Jesus wrong about. He's like, no, no, let me, let me tell you that your motive is wrong. He, he begins to level the playing field. Maybe in our life, sometimes God's got to do that for you and me. He's got he's to he's look at our motive and reveal to us those areas that are a little bit judgmental, the part that we begin to look down on others or compare ourselves to others. He's like, no, let me remind you that it's because of me that you can experience grace. And when I think about light revealing, that's where my mind goes to. But what I love about this story is he reveals to this woman her true value. Like, that's what light does. That's what him being the light of the world does, is it reminds her and speaks to her in a way that people probably hadn't in a long time. Like, if I, if, if I just put myself in the story, you see this woman who's, who's caught in adultery, brought out, she thinks her life is going to end. She thinks it's all over. Why did I get myself in this situation? And all the shouldas begin to go through her mind, and she's thinking through, this is it. It's all over. And he pauses and says, no, I see you as a person. And my light will shine in you to know that you have value. Today, there's probably at least one or two or a dozen of us in the room who need to know that we have value in God's eyes. And that we don't need to be stuck in the things that we've done. See, he doesn't, he doesn't ever condone her behavior. He never says it's okay because he says, go and sin no more. He's like, there's a better way for you. Don't get stuck in the darkness. There's a light that you can follow and that will lead you. But don't get caught in this place. There's a better way. She's not her mistake. See, that's what the light does. It reveals our identity. I'm so thankful for that. I don't know where you are in the room today, but man, I want to encourage you. If you're not sure who you are, pray and turn to Jesus and read the promises he has about you in his word. And you don't have to be what the world says or those words you've heard spoken over you your entire life or even for the last month. It's like, no, this is who you are. He sees us and he values us today. That's what light does. Light reveals. Proverbs, which was written by the wisest man who ever lived besides Jesus, says the Lord's light penetrates the human spirit, exposing every hidden motive. I waited until I encouraged you first, and then I'm going to hit you with a little bit of truth. Because each one of us have hidden motives. God, reveal in those parts of my life that are in darkness, because I don't want to have a hidden motive. I want to be straight up and honest and real and authentic Maybe that's what the light does in your life. When we allow him to come in, we follow him, he'll reveal those areas and go, no, that's not quite right. Not because he condemns, but because he loves us and wants to transform us in a greater way. That's what light does. Light reveals. I think about whenever we go and in the house, we, we like to play games a lot. When you have five kids, you gotta find ways to entertain them. And so we'll play this game, it's called, it's like flashlight hide and seek. And so it'll be, the whole lights are all turned off and the whole house is dark and, and the older the kids get, the better they get at hiding and the, the, the worse it is for me because I'm not quite as agile as I used to be. So really I just stand in one spot and they find me and the game is, is done. That's what happens when you get older, you're like, I can't like move around and maneuver the way that I used to. We have a good time. The light reveals, so in the darkness, the light reveals, even though it's a fun thing to do, man, let's have relationships in our life that we can reveal things that are going on to other people, not in, not in a bad way and not in a condemning way, but in a real way that we're like, hey, I see this thing in your life that's not quite right. God's got something better for you because honestly, church people, here's what we can do. We can hide it and we can, we, we can like not have the conversation, not be willing to, to talk to people about it. And then that just leaves people stuck. 
So just like when a flashlight comes through and lights up a room, let's do it in a loving way and be able to encourage people to let, light, let God's light shine in us and through us to reveal the truth so that we can lead people up and build them up. His light leads, his light reveals. And the last one, his light reflects. See, light reflects. This is important for us to know is, is that light, light will, it, it leads us and it reveals and it reflects. See, I love to look at God's creation, as I mentioned before, and one of the most beautiful things we can experience in the day today is the beauty of a sunrise and a sunset. But then at night, we can see God's creation and this, this concept lived out through the moon. See, the moon is in, in its fullest nights are, is so bright and so shining, but the, the moon itself has no ability to light on its own. See, all the moon is is a reflection of the sun shining onto the earth. As followers of Jesus, like this is one of the most important things that we can do, is we can reflect the love of Jesus. See, light leads, light reveals, and light reflects. We want to position ourselves in this place to reflect the love of Jesus with every single encounter. Again, I don't want to get caught in, 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 in the day to day and just go, I'm keeping my head down, I'm just going through my thing, it's just me and Jesus and that's all that it is. But no, he says love God and love people. So when we get ourselves going, okay, today, Jesus is the light of the world, I want to reflect that love to other people. So what does that mean? It means I get in some sticky situations sometimes. It means I'm going, okay, God, I'm going to reflect you. I don't want to just go through the motions, but instead, okay, how am I supposed to reflect your love to somebody else today? It means I'm positioning myself in the right place. I've got to go, okay, God, this light that is shining in me because of you, God, I want to reflect it to other people. But if we're not careful, we can miss it and just go through everything just as routine. But he says, no, I want you to reflect. In 2 Corinthians 4, 6 and 7, it says, for God who said, let there be light in the darkness has made this light shine in our hearts so we could know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. We now have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God and not from ourselves. Can I tell you, I'm so thankful for that. Like it's God's power in me. Again, I know myself just like you know yourself. And there's so many times that I'm like, God, why did I get that wrong? Why did I get that wrong? And it's like, no, no, it's about me. It's not about you. I can, I can still shine through you. Like, I'm glad that I don't have to be in control, and I'm glad that I don't have to have it all figured out, but instead, I'm just going to turn to Jesus. He's the light of the world. I want his light to reflect on me to point to other people. It's his power in me that allows me to live a life according to the calling he has. Church, we got to reflect. we got to be willing to reflect the love of Jesus. We've missed it. I've missed it so many times when we, when we find ourselves, again, not being in the world being in the world, not of the world, right? We want to be in this place. Go, God, how can I reflect the love of Jesus today? Students, school's about to start back again. How are you going to reflect the love of Jesus? In your neighborhoods, how are you going to reflect the love of Jesus? It's powerful when you see light shining. See, there's, I, I used to watch, when I watch movies, I don't watch that many movies anymore because I can't stay awake for it, but I used to really like those movies, like the old time when they would go and excavate the pyramids, you know, if it was like Indiana Jones or whatever, and so there would be a light shining on one mirror, and then they would turn the mirrors and it would light and shine up like through the whole hallway. And then this whole room would light up. You guys know what I'm talking about? It was all a positioning of the mirror. What if we as a church positioned ourselves like each individually, okay, today I'm going to be in the right spot for God to be able to use me to speak truth and life to other people. I want to be in this place. It's our job as Christians. Like it's not about the fact that we, of who we are, but it's about pointing ourselves to the one who created us and loves us and who shines light in us. Every single day. When I was growing up, we had, uh, we had this, this room of our house that was called the living room. But I could never go in that room. The family room was open for everybody. But the living room was only for guests. And we're like, why is, why is it a living room? It's a looking room. You shouldn't have a different name. But in this room, my mom had all her decorations. And so she, on, this, on this table... She had this, this, these two prisms, 
And my brother and I would love to like look at those prisms and kind of look through in the way that it would magnify and change the perspective when we look through it. But what was interesting about those prisms is, is when the light wasn't shining through them, it was just a paperweight. That's all it was. But as soon as we picked it up and we put it up to the light, it changed what it was able to do. Light shines through, it reflects, lights up the whole room. Direction of the light would go different places. We gotta be so intentional. Don't be a paperweight. Like, don't be a, look at your neighbor, don't be a paperweight. Don't be offended by that. Be a prism, position yourself, put yourself to the light. Reflect Jesus to those that you encounter every day. See, we don't have to wait for these huge moments of life to happen, of like this moment when I encounter this person, I'm gonna pray the sinner's prayer with them and they're gonna get completely saved. It's like, no, daily interactions were able to reflect Jesus. Position yourself to reflect Jesus. Light leads, light reveals, light reflects. Paul, who wrote this letter to the church in Rome, says this in Romans 13. We read this not too long ago in our one-year Bible plan. Starts off, he says, the night is almost gone. The day of salvation will soon be here. So remove your dark deeds like dirty clothes and put on shining armor of right living. He says, remove your deeds like dirty clothes and put on armor of right living. I love how poetic he is in his writing and this, this example that, that he paints for us to be able to read. Because sometimes, like the, what, what, he's, what he's saying here is he's, he gives examples of things to do, things not to do, how you're supposed to live your life, what you're not supposed to do. And he says, all those things that you've done in darkness, like take them off like dirty clothes and put on an armor of light. There's things that I, I know from, from my past mistakes that I've made that I have allowed to define me. But what if we changed our perspective and we looked at it the way that Paul wrote to the church in Rome. And he said, those things that you've done, take them off like dirty clothes. Like, that's not who you are. Like those, those mistakes, those things, just like the woman who, who was caught in adultery, that's not who she is. He says, take them off like dirty clothes and put some armor on. Put on the armor of light of right living. And as, as, he, as he, he writes these, what, I, what it, what it makes, makes sense to me as, is it says, put on the armor of right living. What is armor? It protects. See, when I'm living my life right, following Jesus, living in the light, reflecting for others, I'm protected. I'm like, God, no, I, I'm, there's not, there's things in my life I know you're working on, but I don't have to hide. Like, I can be authentic because I'm going after you together. It doesn't mean I don't make mistakes, but I'm putting on this armor. I'm protected. It also means that armor will reflect light to other people. They can see something different about you. And then it means when I put armor on, it means I'm ready to go to battle. If you don't know this, every day is a battle. We can choose to lay down, we can choose to get up and go to war. For the right reasons, and the war that we're in is to show people how loved they are by Jesus. So I encourage you today, church, put the armor of God, the light of right living on so you can reflect the love of Jesus and be ready. This is what I, is so amazing about Jesus' statement, I am the light of the world. It was true when he said it, and it's true today. There are so many different things that we can give our attention to, and there's so many things that can distract us, that we can be emotional about. We can get anxiety. We can have fear. We can fight these things. And Jesus said, I'm still the light of the world. Like the, the truth is, I'm still who I was so long ago. I came to show you what real love looks like. It's not based on the opinions of other people, but it's who I say you are, and you are loved. I came so you could experience life to its fullest. I died and rose again for you. Jesus is the light of the world. So today, maybe you've been stagnant and you're just kind of going through the motion. Maybe God's light is ready to lead you somewhere to live out your purpose. Maybe it's revealing something in you, this place that you've kind of been holding on to, this like, okay, I know this thing back here is in the darkness, but 80% of me is in the light. God's like, bring it all in the light because that's when I can do my best work. Maybe it's revealing something in you, just reminding you of how important you are. Or maybe you've been in church for a real long time, you've been coming, and he's like, I, I, just, I, just, want, I just want you to reflect my love to other people because this world so desperately needs my light. 
So I want to pray for us today. In a few moments, we're going to have some response time. It's the way we've ended each service during the Signs and Statements series. Not to rush out of here. But before we go there and I give instructions, I just want to pray. God, in our life, light is one of the most constant things. It's something we can take for granted. But God, I pray today for each one of us in the room. God, we recognize the importance of your light in our life. And God, that your light shines in the darkness in such a way that it will never overcome it. For those in the room who need a little bit of hope today, God, I pray that they grab a hold of that with two hands and know that your darkness, the darkness will never overcome you. For, for every person, Lord, that needs to be led by you, God, take steps of faith, follow you. God, I pray that your light will lead them through your word, through conversations, through revelation, Lord, that it will be drawn to you. God, I pray that your light will reveal in us those areas that just aren't, aren't part of your plan. We'll come back to you, God. We'll be okay to have uh, that uncomfortable moment so that we can be better because of it, that our value is revealed in your light. And God, as a church, I pray that we're able to let your light shine through us so that we reflect into our communities to see a difference. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for watching. If this message impacted you in any way, we encourage you to like and share it out. We post new messages every single week, so subscribe if you haven't already. You can also watch past messages, all geared towards helping you live fully alive. To stay up to date with everything going on at Alive Church, follow us on social media or visit our website, livefullyalive.com.